Hi, today we're going to use recurrent neural networks and the LSTM, long short term memory networks for price movements predictions. It can be applied for Forex stock markets or crypto prices. We're going to write our code in Python. And if you are new to this channel, the code can be downloaded from the link in the description below. Looking at the results, the predicted price curve has a similar behavior as the real price movements. And this can be very tempting if you are seeing this for the first time. And you don't know what's behind this type of predictions. So in this video, we're going to review this together and see if it's worth our investment. So the way we're doing this is first by defining our input parameters. And these can be anything from price values, technical indicators and custom indicators that you can include in the data frame. We are looking to predict an output, which obviously would be the price movement trend. So in this particular example, just to make things simple, we will try to predict the next candle closing price. So in other words, if we are using the daily time frame, we would like to predict tomorrow's closing price based on, let's say, the last few days data. This is an example of how our data is presented in a typical data frame. So we have the open price, the high, low, close price, and the adjusted closed price. We have the date as an index in this case. And the way the LSTM model works, it takes past data, for example, from the last four days, if this is the daily time frame, and it will try to predict this particular value over here, which is the closing price of the next day. Obviously, before trying the prediction phase, we have to train the model. And this is done by providing input and output data for the first set that we can see here, then the second set of data, then the third day, for example, we're trying to predict the third day in a row, and so on until we reach the end of our training data set. In this example, we're showing only four input days, you can increase this to six days, for example, or any number of days and see how the results are changing. We're going to do this in a while in our Python code. So at the end, the model requires two dimensional input. And our training data set is in fact three dimensional, taking into account the shape of the training data set. If this is not clear for you at the moment, it's fine because we're going to see things in detail in the coding part. Okay, now let's jump to the coding part and see how the model predictions will go. This is our Jupyter notebook file, we're going to start by importing modules that we are needing. So NumPy, pandas, matplotlib for plotting our curves, and pandas TA technical analysis, because we need the technical indicators in our data frame as well and the Y finance just to download the data we're going to use for our analysis. So here I'm downloading the Russell 1000 stocks starting 2012 up to 2022. So this is 10 years worth of data. This is the daily time frame. Again, we are using the daily time frame here because it's less noisy for our algorithm. And this is the data frame that we are obtaining. We have the open, high, low closing price and the adjusted close price, as well as a volume column that it seems that it contains no valuable data for us. Next step is to add the technical indicators using the TA technical analysis module. So we're using the RSI here. I'm adding this uh, into our data frame as a new column. We have a fast, medium and slow moving average as well. So the length is R20, 100 and 150. The length of the RSI is 15. You can, of course, change these parameters and add other technical indicators to your liking. So this is why I'm sharing the uh, notebook file. You can modify the Python code as you wish. Then I'm adding my target uh, column into my data frame. So there are three ways of doing this. It's either we are checking the difference of uh, price between the current open and the future close price, or we can proceed using classification approach, checking if we are going up or down, for example, in which case you have uh, one of two values, either one or zero, but we're not going to use this for this video. So we can comment these three lines. What we are interested in here is the uh, target next close, which is just the next closing price or the closing price of the next day. And this is obtained just by using the adjusted close column and shifting it with an index minus one. And after doing this, we can drop empty uh, values, empty rows, we can reset the index. And also we can drop the volume 
the closing uh, column and the date column because we don't need them for this study. At this point, our data frame looks like this. We have the open, high, low, then the adjusted close because we dropped the closing price. We don't need it. The RSI, the fast moving average, the medium moving average, and the slow moving average columns. Then we have the target, target class, and the target next close. And this is the one we're going to use and try to predict. So we're going to train our model to predict this particular column. If we take a look at these values, here we have 787.79. So this is nothing but the adjusted close of the next column. So this is what we can see here, 787.79. Then we will apply a scalar to our data because we are using neural networks, so our data should be between 0 and 1, and this is easily done by using the min-max scalar of the scikit-learn package. So this is the way we can do it, so min-max scalar um, applied to the feature range between 0 and 1, and I'm going to fit the data, fit and transform the data, uh, which is called data set, which is my data frame here, using this particular scalar. And what we obtain from this is a two-dimensional array, it's a NumPy array because the, uh, the scalar is going to transform our data frame, our pandas data frame into a NumPy array, which values are scaled between zero and one. So we have to keep in mind that the columns are still kept within this array. However, we have to remember which is the first one, the second one, and so on, just to make sure that we are feeding the model with the correct data. So our data at this point looks like this. We need to discard the last three columns from our input data because we want to feed the model with the open, high, low, the adjusted closing price, and the RSI, the three moving averages, and then we would like to predict the target or the target next close, whatever we want to predict. So my input data is composed of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns in total, because after that is what my model is supposed to be predicting. So we will feed the input as the first eight columns, and then we will choose the target next close column to be predicted. And this is done in the cell. The number of back candles is the number of candles or days you want to look back in the past just to uh, predict what will be coming tomorrow or the uh, closing price of tomorrow's candle. So uh, in the example, I started by four, then I gave the... Uh, number six, for example. So we can try here to read the past 10 days. And we consider that 10 days data should be enough to predict the next candle's closing price. Then we're going to process the eight columns data, as we have explained. We're going to put these into the X, which is our input data for the model. The predicted data, the target data, which is the Y, is one of the columns we're going to choose. So here I'm choosing the last column, column index minus one, which is this target next close. In other words, the uh, closing price of the next day. So if you are here also for the coding style in Python, you can summarize all of this cell into one line of comprehensions. These are the Python lists comprehensions. It works very nicely and it's written in a very elegant way. So I'm not going into details here in this video because it's not the purpose of what we are doing. I just kept it for you if you are interested in the coding part. So now if we take a look at the shape of X, we have eight columns. This is what we considered. We have eight columns including our technical indicators and this is what we have added into our data frame. And we have 10 back candles, second dimension because we considered 10 back candles for the model as an input. And we have 2,437 rows, and this is dependent on the size of our data frame. So if we took 10 years and we cleaned the data later on, what is left for us is 2,437 uh, rows. This is a very tricky part because if you feed the LSTM model with the wrong dimensions, it's not going to work. So uh, you should always verify how is the shape of your data? What did you include in the input and the output data? We can try and print X as well, just to take a look how it looks like. So we have three dimensional array. It's a NumPy array. And if we can print Y as well, we can have a look at it. So this one is a one dimensional array. Actually, it's a two dimensional array, but each element contains only one single value. 
So this is the correct format. This is the trickiest part is to guess what kind of shape is compatible with your model that we are going to train later on. And at this point, we can split our data between the training and the testing data. So 80% of my data is going to be for my training or training the model. And I'm leaving 20% for testing the model. Now we can include the Keras package and some of the modules that are needed for training our LSTM model. Some of these are redundant. Sorry for the mess. I've been copying and pasting these lines around my codes and trying around to see uh, different results. Anyway, we're using TensorFlow and Keras in this case. And notice that my input variable here, we're using the input function and the shape is equal to the number of back candles, meaning the number of rows I'm feeding my model with and the number of columns. So this is a two dimensional input shape matrix that we have to feed for our uh, model in the training part, but also in the prediction part. Then I'm using an intermediate layer of nodes and we have 150 nodes, then one dense layer, one node before proceeding to the output of my uh, result. So the model includes all of these layers and this is indicated here in this particular line. I'm using the Atom optimizer. I'm not going into details in this video. And then I'm compiling the whole model and we can start fitting the model, feeding it with the training data, the input data and the training output data or the value to be predicted. Depending on the parameters of the model, the number of layers, the number of nodes, the number of epochs and so on, it might take a while before the model is trained. So here I chose very simple parameters and very reduced a small model relatively simple model. So it's not going to take much time. And after the model is trained, we can try to predict using the same model, but feeding it with the X underscore test, which is the testing part, uh, meaning the part of the data that the model didn't read yet. So we trained the model on the training data uh, when we split our data into training and testing parts. So the 80% were used for training and the um, test, which is the 20% of the data was kept for now for the predictions. So we can try to predict the uh, Y part, the Y variable, meaning the next day's closing price. And I'm just printing the first 10 values here between the predicted value and the real value that should be predicted. So um, at first we, we cannot compare numbers visually like this. So we can plot these. I'm going to replot what we have seen here. And this is the result we are obtaining so far. And this is where things become interesting, actually. So we can see that we have a very similar um, curve uh, to our data. So we can have the first impression that there is some kind of nice predictions happening there. And the first thing I'm going to do is to go back and instead of feeding the model with the last 10 days data and asking the model to predict one more value, I'm going to feed it with 30 days. So in other words, the model is going to read what happened in the last 30 days and then is going to try to predict tomorrow's closing price. So let's run this back and see what it will be uh, giving. So I retrained the model using 30 back candles and we're going to see the predictions. Predictions looking even closer to the real data in this case to the market prices. And if you are interested in this, we can go back and change the number of layers. You can add additional layers, additional nodes in here. And uh, you can as well uh, actually go back to the beginning and try to add new technical indicators. I mean, I just used four technical indicators here, the RSI and three different moving averages. It would be interesting to check how the model behaves if also we provide the slopes of the moving averages, if they are positive or negative, I mean, going upwards or downwards and so on, and maybe adding a momentum column and other technical indicators that we uh, assume might be useful in this case. Actually, there is much more there. There's a small trap in these results, and I'm going to keep this video as short as possible. In the next video, I'm going to discuss the results, and we're going to rerun things in a more clear way, showing where um, this model is failing 
and why it shouldn't be used as is to predict the market. That being said, some improvements might be done once you understand the failures of the model. It's always interesting because you can apply the corrections. So stay tuned for the next one. Until our next video, trade safe and see you next time.